and welcome to another vlog. I'd like to wish my American friends a happy Thanksgiving as they celebrate the holiday this coming Thursday. Anyway, this Saturday will be the third anniversary of Squeaky Wheel Productions' inception, so I thought I'd spend the duration of today's vlog talking a bit about why I started Squeaky Wheel Productions, what I've done so far, and what my plans for the future are. So, when I first started Squeaky Wheel Productions, my goal was to combine my passion for filmmaking with my passion for advocacy. And I first came up with the idea for Squeaky Wheel Productions during a school project back in 2012 when I was in the Screen Arts program at the Nova Scotia Community College. We had to create a business plan for a fictional production company. And that was when the idea for Squeaky Wheel Productions was first conceived. And right from the get-go, Squeaky Wheel Productions' mission has always been to promote equality and empowerment through digital media. So basically what I mean by that is advocating for people who are marginalized through film and other forms of media. Uh, mainly people with disabilities, but really all minorities, women, indigenous people, visible minorities, and the LGBTQ community, pretty much anyone who's marginalized. Of course, when I first created that business plan, it was just a school project, and I didn't really think much of it. And for those of you who are wondering, the reason it was called Squeaky Bell Productions is because when I first created that first draft of the business plan, my wheelchair had a squeaky wheel. Anyway, fast forward about a year when I was in the business administration program at the Nova Scotia Community College, and I took the business plan for Squeaky Wheel Productions, and I entered an ideas competition, and I further developed the business plan for Squeaky Wheel Productions. And then the following year, I entered the ideas competition again and developed the business plan a little bit more. And I didn't win either of those competitions, but it was still a great chance for me to develop the business plan and figure out what exactly Squeaky Wheel Productions would represent. Anyway, fast forward a year to November 2015, and I decided it was time to take the plunge. I was going to start Squeaky Wheel Productions. So I took my business plan, and I filled out the paperwork, and I registered Squeaky Wheel Productions as a company under the Nova Scotia Registry of Joint Stocks. And I was open for business. And originally, when I started up Squeaky Wheel Productions, I was providing editing and videography services to my clients. But when that didn't pan out, I went back to the business plan. I quickly realized that I was kind of missing Squeaky Wheel Productions' mission, which, like I said, was advocacy. So I went back to the drawing board, and I thought to myself, how can I fulfill this mission? And then in April 2016, I started the YouTube series, Squeaky Wheel Productions Disability Series, um, because I felt that that was a great way to further the mission of advocacy under the banner of Squeaky Wheel Productions. And to date, I've produced close to 140 videos, uh, vlogs and educational videos, covering a wide variety of topics relating to accessibility and disabilities. Anyone who watches this series on a regular basis will be very familiar with the content of this channel. But of course, there's still a lot of things that I want to do. Um, specifically, I'd like to expand the channel and produce a third video each week. I'd like to do some weekly live streams, and eventually I'd like to do an on-the-road series where I travel across the country bringing awareness to accessibility issues. But obviously, before I can do any of those things, I need to further grow my channel. And the best way that you guys watching this vlog can support me in that is to support me on Patreon. You know, not only are you going to get access to some really awesome rewards, specifically you'll be able to suggest topics for future videos, and you'll get access to exclusive behind-the-scenes content such as behind-the-scenes photos and blooper reels and things like that. But you'll also be helping to grow Squeaky Wheel Productions' channel and help Squeaky Wheel Productions further its mission to promote equality and empowerment through digital media. Um, and then, of course, you'll enable me to do some of those things that I mentioned, and maybe even more things. Anyway, it being the third anniversary of Squeaky Wheel Productions founding, I just want to talk a little bit about these things. And I just want to conclude by kind of saying, you know, I'm very proud of what I've accomplished under the banner of Squeaky Wheel Productions over the past three years, and I'm optimistic about where I'll stand in the next three years, and hopefully uh, you people watching this video will accompany me on that journey, and will work together to fulfill Squeaky Wheel Productions' mission. Anyway, I'd like to switch gears now and talk a little bit about this week's theme, which is first aid. 
Uh, specifically, I want to talk about the process of first aid. So first aid is essentially uh, medical care provided to a victim during an emergency situation. And first aid can be divided into four main steps. So step one is to assess the situation. First, you want to determine the victim's diagnosis. You know, are they injured? Did they hurt themselves? Uh, are they in cardiac arrest? Are they choking? Basically, what's wrong with them? And then once you've determined that, you need to evaluate your environment to see if there's any hazards nearby uh, that could put your life in danger. So we're talking things like live wires, active machinery, toxic chemicals, just anything that could put your life in danger that would make it unsafe to approach the victim. Now, if there is any hazards like that, obviously, you can't approach the victim and you have to wait for the first responders to arrive. But if you do determine that it is safe to approach the victim, then you can move on to step two. And step two uh, really depends on the condition of the victim, whether or not they're responsive. So what you do in step two really depends on that. So if the victim is responsive, then you want to communicate with them and first obtain their consent to provide them with medical care. You know, consent is very important with providing anyone with any form of health care. And then once you've gotten their consent, you want to ask them probing questions to determine what their illness or injury is and what kind of care they need and figure out what to do and how to proceed. But if they're not responsive, then you have to examine the victim. You have to first determine if they're conscious. It is very possible that an unresponsive victim may be conscious. They could just be in shock. Um, and also you need to determine if they're breathing. And again, this will help you decide what kind of care they need and how to proceed. So once you've completed step two and determine what kind of care the victim needs, then you can move on to step three, which is to actually provide the care to the victim. Um, so you provide them with whatever first aid they need. First you call 911 so that the first responders can make their way to the scene, and then you provide them with whatever first aid they need. So if they're choking, you give them the Heimlich maneuver, if they're in cardiac arrest, you perform CPR, you clean and dress any wounds or injuries that they might have. Basically, your goal is to stabilize the victim during this step. And once you've done that, you can move on to step four, which is to wait for the first responders. So basically, in this step, your goal and your job is to just wait with the victim and make sure they remain stable until the paramedics or other emergency personnel arrive and then they can take over. Um, really that's the point of first aid is to provide immediate care to the victim uh, before they can get other medical care, so before the paramedics or the doctors can take over. And the biggest thing to remember when providing someone with first aid is to remain calm. You know, if you panic, you're going to act irrationally and you're going to do stupid things, which is going to put your life and the victim's life in more danger and you're not doing anyone any favors if you panic and just make the situation worse. So I can't stress enough how important it is to remain calm. So again, the four step process for first aid is step one, assess the situation. Step two, communicate with and examine the victim. Step three, provide emergency care and step four, wait for first responders. Um, and I've included a lot of resources in this week's video that talk a little bit about that process a lot more, so I'll include a link to one of them in this week's blog. So on Thursday, I'll be releasing a video in which I talk more about what first aid is, so subscribe if you want to see that video, and of course, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And as always, like we discussed, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like this one, then please support me on Patreon. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you on Thursday.